What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Magazine video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build these simple live edge shelves. Stay tuned. The first step in this build was trimming a little width off of the slab and creating a clean straight edge on one side. I used a track saw for this, but you could also use a circular saw with a straight edge. This slab was an offcut from a larger slab I used to build a coffee table previously, and there was a little epoxy left over from that build, so I removed it with a chisel. Next, I skip planed the slab. I didn't need this to be dead flat, just roughly flattened and the surface cleaned up a little bit. The piece was too wide for my joiner, but skip planing got it close enough. This involved taking a little bit off of each side of the slab, turning it over between passes until it was flat on both sides. After planing, I took the slab to the jointer and jointed one edge, squaring it up with the face of the slab. Next, I cut the pieces I needed for the two shelves from the larger slab at the miter saw. I squared up each end and then cut my shelves the length, which ended up being about 24 inches each. I've had this slab for over a year at this point and the bark is still holding on tight. And I really liked the look of the slab with the bark on, so I decided to leave it. There was a small section of loose bark that I decided to reinforce with a little five minute epoxy. I just mixed it up, filled the gap between the slab and the bark and clamped it in place. I did this on the underside of the shelf so you won't see the epoxy in the final piece. Next, I sanded the shelves, working my way through the grits, starting at 80 grit, then moving to 120 grit. After sanding with 120, I rounded over the edges of the shelves with an eighth inch radius roundover bit and then finished sanding with 180 grit. I like to use my roundover bit right before my final sanding as it keeps the roundover from being too affected by the sanding and also helps to remove any tool marks from the router. For the finish on this project, I used Danish oil. I just followed the instructions on the can, flooding the surface and keeping the surface wet for the first coat. The wood will absorb a ton of finish on the first coat, so just make sure to stay close by and keep applying finish. Once the wood stops absorbing the oil as quickly, I let this first coat dry for about 30 minutes and then come back and do the same thing, flooding the surface. I let the second coat sit for about 15 minutes and then wiped off any excess. Also, make sure to lay your rags out to dry completely and unfold them before doing so. If you can do this outside on maybe your driveway, somewhere that's concrete, not flammable, these folded rags with oil-based finish can actually spontaneously combust. And you definitely don't want that to happen in a room full of sawdust and dry wood. So I let the finish dry for about three days and lightly buffed out any surface imperfections with a thousand grit sanding pad. And this left a really nice smooth matte finish, which was exactly what I was looking for. Next, it was time to mount the shelves. The first set of brackets I tried were a metal kind of French cleat set that I found at my local home center. These are designed for hanging picture frames and canvases. And unfortunately, it turned out that the bracket relied on being able to rest on the back of the piece to provide stability, and my shelves just weren't thick enough. I really wanted to get that floating look, but this hardware just didn't work, and I didn't have time to try any other options. If you have a recommendation for another kind of floating hardware that would have worked in this project, let me know in the comments section. I found another set of more traditional brackets in my local home center and used them instead, making sure the brackets were level and plumb. Last, I attached the shelves to the brackets with a few one inch screws from below and they were done. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this project. It was relatively simple, but ended up being a little more complex than I initially expected it to be, especially the little bit of a hiccup with the shelf brackets. I was really hoping those floating brackets would work out. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment telling me what you liked about the video. Uh, it's very helpful for us. Also, if you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed. We have new project videos every Tuesday and new weekly maker roundups every Thursday. And last, if you want a little bit of a behind the scenes look at some of our projects, and want to help support us, check out our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash crafted magazine. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. And until next time, happy building.